Всем привет! Добро пожаловать на канал Прокплог. Мы находимся в Кремниевой долине. И сегодня я решила быть вашим проводником в мир AR. Здесь проходит метап, он называется Open AR Cloud. И я думаю, что мы немножко больше узнаем о мире дополненной реальности. Пойдемте со мной. Мы сейчас послушаем спикеров, а дальше мы спросим отдельно у них несколько слов о БР. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Colin. Where are you organizing? Uh, yeah, so I'm one of the co-founders of an organization called OpenAR Cloud. And we are a nonprofit dedicated to promoting open interoperable standards for modeling reality. There's been a lot of talk recently about building a digital twin of the world. Um, this, is, this is what we call AR cloud data. This is information about the real world that helps machines understand the environment that they're in. So you can have headsets, smartphones, self-driving cars that have an, a, a 3D map of the world that they can understand and navigate around in greater precision than has ever existed before. Um, and there's a lot of different companies that are building these sorts of maps right now. And our organization is dedicated to promoting compatibility and interoperability between all these different mapping standards so that we can start building the spatial web by having a shared map of the world in, that's machine readable and 3D and useful and accessible uh, to at least public spaces to everybody. And then in private spaces, we need to, to create rules and guidelines so that people's privacy is protected. If they want to do augmented reality in their homes, they maybe would take a 3D scan of their bedroom, but they want to be very careful about who has access to a scan of their bedroom at home. Obviously, you share that with friends and family. You don't want the general public to be able to access the, the information that you've built a 3D model of your home around and maybe you've built experiences, but it's only for your friends and family. So how do we build a structure that'll work for that, for this next version of the internet that's going to be, you know, painting data onto the world all around us? Nice to meet you, Victoria. What the major risk, security risk in AR nowadays? So I think the biggest risk right now, and it may not seem like it because we are still talking about, oh, the killer app and all of this, is we have to put these stock gap measures. We have to put some kind of a policy guidelines and do some research and figure out how these things can be hacked and exploited because we could literally lose trust in the domain. Wow. So we're building all these ecosystems and imagine. Yeah. So uh, if you're talking about VR, VR gets more and more realistic and immersive. We already have enough data with, you know, recently uh, Stanford um, VR released some report around augmented reality, how that manipulates and changes our view of actual reality. And that's true with VR as well. Is it is literally, you know, our neural pathways react in a very similar way as if all these experiences are actually happening. So based on my personal experience that way, I think it's as real as it can be. Even if you don't think it is, your brain mm. is processing just like it's real life. Yeah, so the implications are very parallel. Yeah. The like most uh, popular uh, field for AR is uh, game industry. Mm. And uh, as we know, games are always have this violence. How we can regulate this? Uh, I mean, in AR. I think I don't think anybody really knows right this minute how we can regulate this. Perhaps. I mean, today, well, when we had these conversations and the collaborations we have, what's going to happen is we're going to eventually find these answers. So today, I don't know. I don't know how we can regulate such a large amount of data being exchanged between these absolutely advanced technological devices. I don't know. But we're going to have to find these answers. What the main challenges in this uh, field? The main challenges for augmented reality. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Uh, I thought you just <laughs> said two minutes. Um, um, I guess right now the the, the main challenges I think um, I, I would say top are uh, creation tools. So right now there are, um, aren't many tools that allow for non-coders to develop applications. It's game engines or frameworks or things like that. 
So uh, more, more things that allow content creators to create, I think that's a challenge. Um, another challenge is I think that um, uh, pipelines. And, and so that way in, in non-entertainment uh, based, but in more enterprise verticals, um, the pipelines for going from your data to the immersive experiences is a challenge. And then also I think uh, another thing that I find personally a little bit challenging is um, design user experience around multiple device experiences. So everyone kind of focuses on this is my AR app or this is my VR app, where a lot of times you want collaboration and you want multi-user. So it's not about an AR app, it's more about here's my application that has a VR and AR feature. And so I think the fact that everything is siloed apart and people aren't looking at it as just ways of visualizing and interacting with data and immersing themselves, um, that is a big challenge as well. Mm, great, sounds great. Yeah. And what the main uh, like trends? Uh, main trends? Yeah. Um, well, I would definitely say uh, a, a growing trend is definitely on the enterprise markets. It's very interesting to see the way that these enterprise uh, companies are starting to leverage this, and not just as proof of concepts, but really about how do we integrate this into process so that way we can impact bottom line and improve uh, inefficiencies. So, so that is one trend that I'm seeing, um, but it's, it's very hidden. So if one were just to follow you know, what's going on with AR and VR news, you wouldn't really know this because augmented reality is kind of like a hammer. And, and you know, many people have used a hammer. How many hammer conferences have you ever gone to and said, this is how I use the hammer and this is how awesome it is? Not many. So I think that uh, a lot of how people are starting to use this, they don't care about the technology, it's just a tool. There's greater adoption, it's just hidden, unfortunately. Um, so that's definitely a trend to seeing you know, the way that it is improving. And then I also think that um, you know, uh, another trend that's happening is people are starting to play with this more. The barriers to entry are lower. Everyone focuses um, on the consumer side. And so I think that um, from a mass developer, you want millions of people playing with your app. And, and so the distribution for that is, is starting to go toward web now instead of native. So that's another trend is looking at how can the web be a distribution platform for some of these applications. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, like, uh, technology stack uh, mm. that you need to know to be in VR, AR? Well, well I, I am biased um, to the web. So I think that the web is, is a great... Otherwise, um, you're, you're locked into proprietary tools. And nothing wrong with that. But, um, you know, but there are tools that can be gone pretty quickly. So I think that, um, you know, I, I would uh, advocate to developers, if you're a web developer, get involved, right? Um, you don't have to learn game engines now. And so that's what's kind of cool about that. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. My name is Victoria, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What are you doing here? Why are you here? So basically I'm actually here for the AWE conference, which is the Augmented World Expo, and um, I was invited to attend the, the AR Cloud conference today to learn more about that and learn more about the AR Cloud, which is really fascinating. So I actually cover VR esports, I'm a VR esports journalist, mm -hmm. and so I don't know that much about AR, to be quite honest, but you know, we all have to learn, and so that's one of the great things about um, all the new technology. I think it's important for people who don't know that much about it to also be involved a little bit to a degree so that we can kind of translate that from the, the people doing the imaging work and creating it, the engineers and developers and designers and all that, and so then we can kind of put that into a perspective for regular people. So like I think a lot of people don't understand, for example, how AR could be applicable to them, like what can you use this for? Yeah. And so it's important to have um, people who maybe don't work in the industry or directly you know, involved that they can also come in and start saying, hmm, this is a great thing and this is how we can use that and, and help the rest of the world understand that. So basically that's what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I actually will be on a panel for VR Esports later this week and that's where I, I, I really enjoy that because I know a lot about that field and I've been deeply involved with that for the past couple of years. If we're talking about VR and AR, uh, where can we use it? Yeah, there are a lot of ways that it's actually being used for other things and so some of the best things are, for example, you can have um, surgeons that are using it for training 
or people can practice like like for example I literally have three teenagers I'm teaching to drive and so I was actually telling them it would be really awesome if I could um, have them sit in the car and actually have an AR system they could use to help learn that or if they could actually in VR have a driver's training program so we can use VR and AR for so many things that we haven't even considered yet and I think the education is a big one to, you can take field trips you know I have a friend who actually speaks Russian and a very good friend of ours I would love to be able to go into VR with him to somewhere in Russia and him speaking Russian and us speaking English and he could actually help teach us Russian in his in his native country yeah. you know, isn't that so amazing yeah it sounds great so, yeah there's just so many things we can do What are the main challenges and problems of AR and VR now? So one of the problems that um, augmented reality and virtual reality actually solves is really in the extension of the real world. So in a lot of cases we don't have the information that we need or we don't have the space to um, uh, produce what we need. For example, uh, the museum industry is very constrained. They have buildings that they um, have built, but they have millions and millions of, say, paintings or sculptures, which you and I will never see. But with a virtual reality environment, they can scan those, turn those objects into three-dimensional data, and then they can build virtual buildings where now you and I can see a lot of this artwork where today you, ha you can't. There's not even enough time or space in the world for you to be able to go see those things. And you can actually put in your preferences. Like, I'm very much interested in you know, 16th century um, architecture, right? So I could type that in and then I could go and explore those places, which I would never be able to do today, right? Uh, maybe it's pottery or paintings, but it's all protected. So that's one of the main things that I think virtual reality can solve is really access. And I don't have to have money or even the physical abilities to travel, and I can still have access to those sorts of things. And augmented reality will be able to do some of the same things. I'm trying to fix my sink and I don't know how to fix it. It's got some tricky bolt or whatever, and I could have a augmented overlay in that environment where I could actually get that done myself, right, in a much more easy way. Or I need to um, um, solve a problem very quickly in a factory as a worker, right, and I can get that information at my fingertips. Now, with every positive thing, right, there's a negative part of that. So, in what we've been talking about here at the Open Cloud AR Summit, is about all of that data and information can also be used for things that are negative, yeah. like violating my privacy potentially. So the same, the same information that might be important um, to get one job done could be used negatively in another way. So one of the things we're trying to do is come together as a consortium and really say, this is the possible problems, but this are the positives, and how do we balance the positives and the negative to come to a place where we can move from this two-dimensional world to a three-dimensional world and have it be something that truly enhances our lives. My first question is about the mission of this event. Yeah, we uh, want to, first we want to present what our community of volunteers have been working on. We, 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 bring, we bring people together from all over the world, from different professions, and we have 10 working groups in Open Air Cloud. And we worked hard for a couple of months to compile the first overview of, of this nascent industry, this nascent sort of transition from flat screen computing and letting the digital come out into the real world, having the digital fused together with the physical world. And that creates a lot of potential, great potential, and there are also new dangers. So, sort of like technology, also always is a double-edged sword uh, and the sword is sort of getting sharper as technology is advancing and now we have to be more careful probably than earlier generations when we're in IT like IT in the 70s didn't generate those consequences that we see today uh, also, if you go to the 1990, when the web technology was starting to come into the world, they couldn't foresee the complexity around how, how the web was going to include all our activities. 
for good and bad. Uh, just, just like documents with links, very simple, but it develops into our digital lives today. And now we're having this platform shift. It's going to take a few years, but it's going to profoundly change everything about how we do our jobs, how we interact with other people, how we interact with the world around us. And we need to be cognizant about it. We need to have the information, we need to have the discussions. And that's what this uh, report that we created starts. So it doesn't have all the answers, but it explores some of the issues and presents our best knowledge so far. And we hope that we can build on that and have, when we bring people like this into a symposium, we are better suited to arrive at better solutions, to uh, achieve the good opportunities while avoiding the bad scenarios. Mm, thank you. Thank you for your answers. And, uh, You're yeah, welcome. Anna. Thank you for having me. So I'm one of the uh, um, governing board members of Open Air Cloud, and we promote uh, interoperability, openness in the spatial web. And uh, my company, Contest Grid, or Contest Grid, uh, is developing a uh, app called the uh, Hologrid, which is a AR browser which can connect to, uh, which can view multiple AR worlds. So you don't have to download multiple apps for uh, if there was a different AR world in this building, and there was another one in a station. Uh, you'd be able to use one app, Hologrid, to be able to browse everything. So, um, yeah, so we're part of Open AR Cloud, which is very in line with our ethos and our mission statement. And uh, we've actually mapped out the whole of uh, uh, the AWE Santa Clara, so that uh, anybody in there will be able to navigate, uh, find where the speakers are speaking, find different uh, sections of AWE, and uh, yeah, also find useful and fun holograms too you can interact with. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank no you. worries. Thanks. Cheers.